order of operation, we'll have a presentation from University of Brazil uh, on landscaping information modeling for carbon credit enhancement in for Fortaleza. We will have a project in Connecticut, University of Connecticut, where they're studying the sustainable vacant lot greening for enhancing landscape connectivity. And in the University of South, South Korea, how to save urban parks in danger. This work prospects the potential of landscape information modeling to improve feedback in geodesign. The metropolitan region of Fortaleza, the sixth largest in Brazil, has been examined in this case study for the International Geodesign Collaboration Workshop, Trees for Metropolitan Regions, which aims to increase green areas for carbon credit. Here are the location of the metropolitan region of Fortaleza. It's composed of 19 municipalities and was divided into four landscape units, coast, reeds, Caatinga and productive macro region. The coast displays two constructing sectors, which appear to be temporal mirrors from one another. The eastern territory encompasses the city of Fortaleza and symbolizes the present time of a large urban area, which developed from a portuary settlement. The western portion represents the past time of the eastern, where a modern portion was just being founded. The region's territory are mostly composed of steep slopes and masses of preserved vegetation. It is a region with high water provision, relevance, and with high potential and carbon credits, since it preserves the forest vegetation into three regions. The Caatinga is very well preserved Brazilian savanna surrounds the ridges, is still very little urbanized and is used mainly as an area for agricultural produ production. The productive macroregion area presents municipalities with similar characteristics related to agricultural and cattle production. Despite presenting large and green patches of unoccupied soil, these are of low quality vegetation, typical of a degraded soil. Here the method, the methodological diagram divided in four steps, the guiding concept with the re metropolitan region today and the planning concept in blue. Here the steps, uh, six methodological steps accomplish the section of data for later parametric modeling and evaluation of pre-established goal. First, reading enrichment and planning concept. The second, division of the metropolitan region into landscape units. The third, selection of sample for each landscape unit. The fourth, proposition of innovative solutions. The fifth, design of green areas preserved, expanded, or created within samples. The sixth, evaluation of carbon credit enhancement and feedback. In the first stage, three scenarios have been designed for 2035 and 2050, the traditional, the late, and the early adopted. Here, the layers used in the space diagnostics. Uh, the first line, is for the metropolitan region and the others are for the samples, altimetry, area of influence of health service and others. Here are the innovations for 2035 and 2050. And the propositions, the division of landscape units again and the propositions for traditional 2035 and 2050 for each section. Here we have the synthesis of each scenario of for each sample, the proportional goal, the CO2 capture above and below ground and the project number of trees. Replication, the uh, designed green areas 
from samples to their respective landscape units resulted into in a total carbon credit increase of 33.19% for the traditional scenario, 44.29% for the late adapter, and 87.71% for the early adapter. Our first thousand and fifth, which goal has been established by the IGC at 30%. Here we have the final propositions for each sample and infographics of the today, 2035 and 2050, the, the projection of, the, of each sample. And here we have the participants. Thank you all. The final results for each sample, because we divided the metropolitan region because it's too big and we had a, a small group into smaller parts. So we created propositions for each part. And the final results and infographics with the evolution. I don't know if you can see there but the colors of the the greens are passing through through the years uh, today how it is uh, for 2035 and 2005 the final proposition it's how it should be Great. and Thank at you. the side the location Thank you, Anna. Sorry for those technical difficulties. All right, well, let's move on to this next one and hopefully we can get back to that with some discussions after we play the remaining two videos. Hi everyone, my name is Pan Zhang from the University of Connecticut. The geodesign project I presented here is about sustainable weight cloud greening for enhancing landscape connectivity in Hartford, Connecticut. The study area is located in Hartford, one of the largest post-industrial and forest city. The study focusing on a 3.3 mile wide square area in the northern part of the city, and it is made up of a massive amount of vacant lots. Vacant land in post-industrial cities has always been treated as negative spaces associated with high crime rates and environmental degradation. However, this study collaborated with four joint park design plans to exemplify the use of sustainable design features in harnessing urban decay and vacancy to pursue a series of sustainable urban development goals, such as climate change adaptation, stormwater management, environmental justice, and promoting ecosystem services. In order to testify the Treating Tree Initiative, this study also prioritized around 300 acres of vacant parcels which have high landscape connectivity. The study highlights the approaches of utilizing vacant lots for additional tree planting in the urban area, which can contribute to biodiversity, environmental remediation, and urban revitalization in general. The order to prioritize vacant lots with higher landscape connectivity, we suppose all current and potential vacant land in 2035 will become forest patches and then calculate their individual connectivity importance to the whole urban landscape. Then we select post the potential vacant lots for future parks and forests based on the criteria that Firstly, they have high connectivity importance and they contain existing tree canopy on their land. They are zoned as open space in urban planning regulations and they are better publicly owned. And then they propose four different site designs for sustainable placemaking. And then we assess the benefits of additional tree canopy coverage in different scenarios. This study integrates five categories of IGC system innovations. This is our um, recommendation for green space interventions, including proposed public parks and urban forests. In the early adapter scenario, prioritized vehicle lots are transformed into green space and urban forest, and other vehicle lots will also be reclaimed as infill development and mixed use 
just as the city currently advocated. This would promote urban vitality, enhance biodiversity, attract more urban population, and promote economic growth. While in the later adopter scenario, urban declining and deindustrialization continues without prioritizing certain vacant lots for green space, part of them will be first chosen to turn into other impervious land covered or stay abandoned by 2050. Only a few vacant land left with less ecological value will be turned into green space or simultaneous vegetative area. If we do not take any action, there are more and more decayed industrial and commercial sites become vacant lots by 2035 and 2050, and the city become more degraded with decreasing land value, more brownfield, and less attractive for urban drivers. Based on SDG evaluation, there are significant decrease from early adaptation with around 200 points to no adopter scenario with minus 130 points. There are 9,000 more trees and around 6,000 tons of carbon captured by the early adaptation scenario. However, if no action taken, there will be a loss of 25,000 trees and only 320 tons of carbon sequestered. The first park design example transformed abandoned steel casting factory and tech institute site into indoor outdoor gallery park for the community. It includes eco-revelatory model by adopting a series of stormwater green infrastructure, such as bioretention pond for public education. Adaptive reuse of abandoned buildings kept good facade and roofs while uh, demolished a clumsy part of the building for open space. The second design project transformed a street corner brownfield into a community park. By tactical urbanism approach like street painting, it enhanced pedestrian environment and also engages community members. This design includes both semi-open space for mental mediation and community gathering space, such as other performance stages. The third and the fourth park plans are examples of simple designs such as urban forests for hiking and jogging, as well as transforming service parking lots into a new garage and ring garden parks right beside the stadium. According to MSPA and network analysis in early adaptation scenario, there are much more poor tree canopy habitats and corridors and higher connectivity for the overall study area landscape. With all this being said, we recommended early adopter plans for maximizing landscape connectivity to promote biodiversity while also promote other sustainable benefits. I wanted to thank you, my PH advisor, Dr. Soin Park, and my colleague, Dr. Tao Wu, and undergrad student, Jun Yi Shi, for their contributions. Thank you, everyone. All right, thank you. Last. Hello everyone, my name is Youngmin Kim from University of Seoul, South Korea. In 2035, 2,219 public parks in Seoul, which covers 80% of the entire parklands, will be illegal. Okay, how can public parks be illegal? In the 1960s, Seoul designated urban parks without purchasing the entire parkland. In 1999, the Constitutional Court sentenced that appropriating private lands as public space without proper compensation is illegal. In order to maintain the current park system, Seoul needs 1.5 billion US dollars to purchase private properties remaining in a park. However, only 10% of required budget is secured now. If the city needs to give up some parks, it is necessary to come up with good strategies. This study provides three different scenarios for the future of urban parks in Seoul, which could disappear drastically. Let me introduce the legal concept of unexecuted park. If a park contains a private property in its boundary, it is regarded as an unexecuted park. An executed rate is the area of private property divided by the total area of park. This is the legal definition of our research subject. From 2020, a park unexecuted for 10 years will be no longer maintained as a park, which means if the city is not able to fully purchase 
private properties remaining in a park, owners are allowed to develop a park as other land uses. The research team proposed three scenarios implementing different strategies for unexecuted parks and green spaces of Seoul. First, the early adapter scenario applies the most aggressive policies and planning tools to maintain parklands as many as possible. It assumes the city allocates a big budget to purchase parklands, giving this policy the highest priority. Second, the late adapter scenario is basically make money first and save critical parks later. It will drastically give up good parks and maximize profits from them. The city will develop the most profitable parklands by 2035. After securing enough money, the city will start to rebuild its park system from 2035 to 2050. The non adapter scenario assumes a minimum government intervention. Even though a great portion of park areas will be privatized, some of the former parklands can be remained <coughs> as green spaces since their conditions are not really desirable for intense developments. The results on this page are the same as the former page. However, the results are sh only showing the information how many parks and green spaces will be lost and maintained as public, according to different scenarios. By 2035, both the early and the late adopter scenario are beneficial mostly to SDG 3, 6, 11, 13, and 15, while detrimental to SDG 9 and 10. The overall score of the early adopter and the late adopter is similar, whereas the non adopter is comparatively low. In the early adopter scenario, the overall tree number increases 4% by 2035 and 10% by 2050. The amount of carbon capture is also increases gradually due to the increase of trees. In the later adopter scenario, the tree numbers decreases 3% by 2035. After the city rebuilds its park system, both the tree number and the amount of carbon capture increase about 3% by 2050. In the non-adapter scenario, both the tree number and the amount of carbon capture decrease in 2035 and 2050 in the project level. Additional to the required IGC evaluation indexes, the project estimated uh, effects of ecological service of three scenarios, urban flood risk, carbon capture, and urban cooling effect were compared using the invest model. In terms of three indexes of ecological service, the later adopter scenario yields the best result. The research team came up with four detailed design schemes for strategic sites. The first two projects followed the early adopter scenario. And the second two follow the later adopter scenario. These are our team credits and source of data. Conclusion. Considering the tree numbers and the carbon capture, the early adopter scenario yields the best result. However, the project's goal is to face with the real crisis that the city is now facing with. The problem of unexecuted parks is caused by legal issues and also the financial limits. Even though SDG indexes are slightly lower than the early adopter scenario, the late adopter scenario is considered as the more realistic alternative for the city. Thank you for listening. All right, thank you. Some really interesting projects there. It looks like we have some uh, questions, uh, all from Brian. So thank you, Brian, for starting these conversations here. 
Um, we'll go just down the list here, starting for Anne. Um, this is to you. Your approach to the project is different than others of the Brazilian pro uh, that, different than others of the Brazil projects. The numeric results are very strong, and the schematic diagrams are very useful to a designer and easy to understand. Have you discussed your methods and outcomes with other teams? Yes. Uh, first, uh, we chose to do a, a different, uh, some adaptations because of the numbers of participants. We had a small group. So we find that that was better if we divided in small areas. And about the numbers, um, and we talked uh, with Ana Clara and communicated the other groups that we were going to do a little bit different. Um, the numbers, it's because of the metropolitan region of Fortaleza. We have um, a concentration of urbanization at the capital and closer to the capital. And the other cities of the metropolitan region, when you go far from the, the city of Fortaleza, it's more uh, rural area. No, we don't have much uh, urbanization. So we use this as a, a good point to to increase vegetation on these areas. Do you think this method would be uh, successful in other regions, or do you think it was particularly useful for yours? site? We took the the different uh, situations. We chose different samples. So it was one at the capital and others uh, at other cities that with diverse characteristics. And then we expanded the, the small samples to the region. That's a little bigger, but with sim some similarities. And then we did uh, the, the whole metropolitan region with that samples. I think it's it could work for other regions. It, it's like a, a puzzle <laughs> from the, the small to the, to the big. <laughs> And maybe it could work at other regions too. Not with the, the numbers, if the region is really with a lot of urbanization, because I, I think it, we have other causes like probably uh, move people to greater the, the vegetation of things like that, but I think it can work. Great, thank you. Moving on um, <clears throat> again from Brian, this is to Panzang. Uh, your project contrasts with many from urban areas in the global south, as in many, as in many of those places, vacant lots would be filled immediately. Despite that, your project was has quite modest improvements in carbon capture. And on a per capita basis, things look bad. Can you suggest other more dramatic approaches that would enable greatly increased tree planting? Um, hi, everyone. And thank you for the um, question, Brian. Um, I think, first of all, I want to say that I think the project is pretty um, hypothetical and instead of really focus on the chilling tree um, and the carbon sequestration kind of thing of the improvement, I really wanted to um, showcase how um, these things can be combined with vacant lot transformation. But if we do wanted to focus on like a very good improvement of like carbon thing, we can definitely have other approaches like um, maybe um, so enhance like street planning or 
you know, at more urban parks, but in the local condition of Hartford, Connecticut, there are, so first of all, as uh, some of you may know, actually Connecticut is pretty much like a forested state. So I think the big concern of um, the landscape in Connecticut is more um, landscape fragmentation and also, and that's why I wanted to focus on the landscape connectivity. And uh, so currently Hartford has already had uh, more than 25% um, of tree canopy coverage, which is quite a um, kind of in like um, top some place in the nation. And the city do have a goal of increase that to um, 35% in the, in the next 50 years. Um, so in my uh, project was re re really trying to showcase, you know, then how, how can we, um, achieve some of these goals by uh, transform the vacant lots, but I think it's not quite realistic to transform all the vacant lots into like a tree canopy or so. And also, um, so, and then, uh, so uh, apply such case to the national level assessment, I would say it's, uh, it's really hypothetical and it's, I, so I really would say my product is really like localized and, uh, in the nationalized, the number look bad is because they also account for, you know, like the natural loss and harvest number, but um, maybe um, in other place that um, the tree camp is not that high right now, maybe they can like add more. And then, but I think in, in this city case, um, that's like how my number come out, yeah. Thank you. I hope it's like answering your question. Thank you, Kwan Zeng. Um, to move on, this is for Young Min Kim, again from Brian. This is a very interesting problem. The logic for your late adapter scenario to sell some land to finance the protection of other land makes sense. How is the early adapter approach to finance? Uh, do the carbon benefits offset the cost of the parks? In some US cities, the benefits of water harvesting through green infrastructure have been used to offset the cost of parks. Do you think that would ever be feasible for carbon sequestration? Um, well, um, actually, this is, I'm, I'm not sure the other country has this problem. Um, and it's more about the legal issue, because, you know, like the 60s, Korea was one of the poorest country in the world after the Korean War. And then, uh, you know, the economy grow really fast. So land price like rock is, um, is incredibly uh, raised. That's how this problem occurred. And um, uh, to be accurate, uh, the early adaptive senior is not selling the land because it's already a private land. So the city cannot sell it, but uh, the city has the right uh, to give a, um, you know, the permit for the developments. So we're um, actually, I'm more thinking about uh, uh, proposing some texting system like US uh, in California, there's a Melrose uh, text system. So if you build the new developments around the park, um, the developer pay the tax or the, you know, the homeowners pay the tax for uh, uh, that park amenities. So we're thinking about more of a, a taxation uh, in the, the second scenario. And um, in early adopted scenario, um, so basically it's step. And what the city and the government is thinking is a step, like uh, um, already the city of Seoul uh, released a the bond, the city bond of, uh, I think almost 0.5 billion USD. Uh, and uh, it assumes in the first uh, scenario, the Korea central government uh, have a authority to give some money for the emergent, you know, uh, cases. Uh, so we're assuming the must kind of possible uh, scenario that the central government gives some money to the city and the city 
the mayor, the new mayor, uh, allocate a lot of portion of, of the uh, city's budget to the, um, the park system. Uh, so basically, first is the bond debts, and second is uh, the money from the central government, and third is uh, the new mayor's the goodwill. Uh, uh, politically, you know, allocate those uh, big portion of money. So that's the answer for the, um, I think, first one. And the second one is a, uh, uh, the carbon uh, benefits. I think in Korea uh, now it's more of a national issue. Domestically, uh, some politicians are thinking about. Um, you know, giving some money for those uh, uh, carbon benefit and giving penalties uh, for the you know the um, some the, uh, to the, the carbon emissions, but it's not really uh, valid. Uh, so I think the carbon benefit offset is not an option at this moment for the city. And um, the third question. Um, so I, I'm not sure how that works. The U.S. city gets some money from the water harvesting, um, maybe in some arid area, but uh, in Korea, the water is, we, we had a flooding issue, also some drought issue, but because of the climate change, we're having more of the flood issues now. So we have, abundant water resources. So um, uh, of course we are, we are applying the LID systems, uh, low, low impact development systems and the water collecting systems. Uh, but I'm not sure how that works exactly for the money issue, the water harvesting. So third uh, question. I Brian has a follow-up question um, for you, Young Kim. Not so much a question as a comment, actually. When, when Young Min mentioned uh, local taxation, it kind of, it just struck me that, you know, where I live in the United States is a very, very conservative area. People hate taxes of any kind, but we have a special 1% uh, tax that local people can, local people can vote on their willingness to pay this extra 1% in order to support parks. And so despite the fact I'm in a very, very conservative place, we have this regular taxation, this local taxation, it's called a local option, special purpose taxation. And, uh, you know, that, that may be, for many of us, you know, a very powerful way to kind of fund the, the kind of things you're talking about, young men, because your situation sounds terrible. <laughs> it is, it is terrible. It seems that <clears throat> for both, you know, the the dilemma in, in Seoul and then in the, the vacant lot reuse in Harper, Connecticut, that the, some of the solutions might be some sort of public private relationship between landowners and then public use so that somebody could be generating revenue while providing amenities to the citizens or in benefits to the ecosystem. Um, I don't know how often that's being approached right now, I'm not that familiar, but it seems to me that, is that not true that that might be some of the solutions that came out of your studies? It seemed like both of your case studies, your designs were based off of some sort of revenue generation, whether it's a museum um, along with this open space or green space. Um, yeah, um, I mean, the, the city uh, is trying really hard to, um, to 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 transform this vacant lot thing, and my study was and it's an extension of a previous study asked by the city. They asked uh, asked us to uh, analyze their city owned vacant lots, like what kind of use that can be turned to, and some of these um, designs are actually uh, was kind of got inspirations from them and. Uh, in in terms of and they so they kind of embrace the idea, but um, it definitely really require a lot of like budget or so to do that. And uh, rather, 
sometimes they might prefer a very simple design, a simple branding, and uh, uh, talking about the public private ownership, that's also like another thing, really like a big concern to do this kind of transformation. And the city currently, I think they're proposing like a land bank to, um, to rehab some, uh, some really blight spots and uh, trying to have some like a house that they renovated and then uh, ran out to some low income people. So, and that's the reason why I kind of have a very conservative uh, tree canopy adding to those objects of Econ Lot because there are many other needs that also need to be achieved by this kind of uh, Econ Lot transformation. And these are very um, high dense neighborhood that people really live like very crowded and they need some um, new or maybe uh, public invested housing for like deal with the homelessness issue and many other things. So yeah, I hope I uh, it's helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, Errol, what was the question exactly? Can you, can you summarize well, it? I was just trying to start a discussion about you know, in terms of maintaining green space, as in Seoul, um, I think one of your or or finding green space out of publicly owned vacant lots. Um, I think one of your examples was allow the the owner to develop develop you know a private enterprise, but also mm -hmm. maintain green space around it. So having some sort of relationship where oh, okay. owners could still yeah. generate revenue while providing amenities to the public as a way to encourage green space right so um one issue is a uh, um actually for the main maintaining uh the budget the maintaining costs in korea um where where does the financial source come, come from is really generous compared to the i think U us because i know a lot of case some parks should be closed when the city doesn't have the maintenance budget but um, it's all public, so um, in Korea, it's coming from all the techs. Uh, so we, from now, we we don't we didn't really worry about the maintaining cost or quality of the park, and it's all you know uh, public realms. But because of this issue, uh, the unexecuted park, uh, we were developing some uh, some mechanism, uh, and one was uh, actually the uh, taxation. And other issue was a uh, other mechanism. I think uh, some part that Brian was right. Uh, it's not selling the park, but uh, um, we allow if the private firm develop the make the park, uh, we uh, the now the city can give twenty percent of land allow uh, twenty percent of land to be developed and commercial as a commercial residential. So that's how uh, some of the undisputed part are developed as a public part again. So um, the big company purchased the whole land as a park, and then 20% of the land is allowed to be developed as they want. So that's one of the mechanism uh, bringing the uh, private funding to the public area uh, in Korea now. Great, thank you. Any any questions or thoughts from anyone else out there? Yes, Brian. Yeah, sorry, but, but I'm I'm curious because we've got so many people from uh, Brazil that have participated in this. Is you know taking that issue that that was just being talked about. What is the situation in Brazil regarding ownership of of land in cities? You know when you when you as a designer identify an area for um, increased tree planting, is that owned by the city or is it, uh, it, does it tend to be privately owned? I think that it's intended to be, it's, it's private owned mostly, but you can have some kind of uh, private public uh, arrangements that can people in the private, uh, when they are doing some uh, developments, they can try to make uh, arrangements to the city and uh, give up some portions of its its area to green areas. 
So you have a lot of disagreements being drawn here by each city. I think that it's very particular for each city because it depends on each uh, regulations that come from everywhere. But anyway, I think it's uh, something that's been developing here because uh, if you say that you're going to give an uh, area for the public use in a city like Sao Paulo, the municipality will say, no, thank you, we don't need that. <laughs> because they don't want any more uh, expenses. They don't have their budget. No more room for any more budgets for, this, for these new areas. But if you say that this is part of arrangement with the private sectors and all this uh, allow, uh, how do you create this mechanism to make these things happen? I think this will be possible because the, the private sector now is very aware that when they build something at side of a green area, they get more value. So if they like this uh, increase in their value, they should have more greens. So uh, it's, very, it's not so difficult to convince the private sector that they should be able to overcome their desire for maximum occupancy and try to give some sp uh, room for green areas. Mm, did you have something you wanted to say? Well, yeah, that I, was the question I was going to oh. ask. Brian did it. I think here uh, that would work. The this public and in private um, combination uh, it already happened at some places as a, a compensation actually and some buildings that are taller that it should be done at the legislation and they do some compensation to to the city with green areas or revitalization so sometimes happens Great, thank you. Ana Clara. Uh, just to add a few words about the method that Anya and her group use it. In the other projects, people designed the polygons to carbon credits as a proposal of an idea. In their group, instead of drawing the polygons and proposing the areas, they simulated the possibility of areas uh, as an automaton cellular in parametric modeling. So the new areas are constructed by this dynamic modeling that they did. So instead of proposing areas, the, the, the tool that they use it simulated the possible areas. Isn't it any the way that you designed the proposals that was different from the others? Yes, we, we took a, a sample to multiplicate the, we took a sample and then we uh, calculated the area and multiplicated to, to a larger, uh, a larger area. So uh, the possibility of using machine learning or other options to, make it better for small groups or to have propositions, different propositions and things like that. Great. Well, thank you all. We have nine, eight seconds left. So um, great presentations, thoughtful discussion. I really appreciate it.